Do you have your lineup yet? I do. Would you give it to us? No. <laughs> I'll, I'll give it to you tomorrow morning. So, um, uh, but I do know what it is, and um, you know, I've, I've talked to a couple people that um, you know, obviously, you know, someone significant will be out of the lineup. So, um, but I, yeah, so we'll release that tomorrow morning. All right. So you did announce that you would have Donaldson leading off. Am I correct? Yes. All right, so what's your thought process behind that? Why, why does he intrigue you as a leadoff man? Uh, well, first of all, he can really mash. Um, mm -hmm. But a guy that is, you know, he, he kind of defines that, you know, aggressive nature you like, um, can hurt you, obviously, in a hurry, but also controls the strike zone incredibly well. So I think at his best, he's going to be a guy that gets on a ton for us. Um, has the ability to do a lot of damage and, and, and being in the leadoff spot, uh, that spot's going to come around uh, every so often. So with, you know, with what we're able to do in the middle uh, of the order, um, I really like Josh up there. Did, uh, did you, were you prepared for today being rained out or th does it mess with anything that you didn't start the day you thought you were going to? Um, you know, I think because it started to become a potential reality a couple of days ago, um, you know, it, it doesn't mess with much other than, you know, pushing Garrett back a day, which doesn't affect much. You know, the only thing we, we might have done is potentially had like a Nestor Cortez in the bullpen had, had we played today, um, knowing that with the off day, we could slot him in back at the back end of the rotation uh, ahead of Cole. But, um, you know, with 16 pitchers, that's not such a big deal. The more of it now is just, hey, we got 10 in a row right out of the gates. Now, obviously, um, even before this rain out, Aaron, you talked about a very compressed schedule in April with not many off days. Well, now there's one fewer. Does that concern mm -hmm. you, especially with a three-week spring training? Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, I, I don't think the off day necessarily, you know, the rain out today necessarily affects that because that off day was going to be tomorrow anyway. So it's a compressed schedule from, from really starting tomorrow now, but in that case would have been Saturday. Um, yeah, no, no question. Um, you know, with the 16 pitchers and, and still building those guys up, I don't worry about that schedule as much from their standpoint because I feel like we're protected there. But, um, you know, from a position player standpoint, um, you know, even though these guys were able to play a lot in spring training, which which I think is a really good thing, and that they were able to have a lot of at bats and kind of get their volume up, you know, I do get concerned a little bit when we start going six, seven, eight days in a row, and they haven't been there yet. So, um, hopefully, that's where you know our roster protects that a little bit. You know, having that, you know, as we as I keep calling it, that one extra really starter impact players sitting on the bench each day and being able to rotate that a little bit hopefully that'll serve us well in the month of april as we continue to build these guys up the way to beat the red sox any different this year than the last time you played them in the wild card um well i mean we 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 have some different approaches we have a few different players obviously a little bit of a different lineup um you know, some different coaches with some, you know, some different things that have been implemented that, you know, all things that hopefully can contribute to us, um, you know, being a little bit better, not only against the Red Sox, but really against every team. Now, you, you said that you've made your decision on the lineup. So somebody that expects to start is not starting. Uh have you had that conversation, and is that a difficult conversation to have? Because, you know, we talk about it's just a game, but you know, Aaron, you've been in the game your whole yep. life. Opening day means something special, so is that a conversation that's difficult for you to have? Yeah, yeah. Let me start with I on opening day. Opening day um, is, is a big deal. It's a really big deal to me. I, I think it's a day to be celebrated. I've been blessed to be, um, you know, going to opening day, you know, watching my dad to then being a player to now being a manager in a lot of opening days and it's a really special day so you know to have that conversation with a guy that you feel like is going to be an everyday player for you throughout the year who you believe is going to be an impact player for you yeah that's a tough conversation but something that you know also i tried to get out ahead of you know when when i really had all those guys in my office about 10 days ago and saying hey there's going to be 
you know, there's there's gonna one of you guys in here. I, I, I basically brought in the nine guys for the eight spots, and I basically said one of you guys is gonna have to sit o- on opening day. And I understand, you know, that's you know that that can suck, and that's not gonna be fun. And um, but in a cautionary t- like I I I, I, I noted uh, what what DJ did in 2019 when I told DJ ahead of time, I'm like, you're probably not going to play opening day, but you'll probably play every day, <laughs> if that makes any sense. He ends mm-hmm. up getting 655 plate appearances and finished fourth in the MVP. So I'm like, this is going to work itself out, guys. We're, you're going to protect each other, especially as we build up. It's going to allow us to give a strategic day off here and there, you know, assuming you guys are all healthy, and that's assuming we're all healthy all throughout mm-hmm. the year. And inevitably things come up obviously so I, I know it's something that's going to play itself out over time and not be a big deal and be something that hopefully serves them and us well but I, I certainly acknowledge the the awkwardness and the you know disappointment of it being on opening day and uh, it's it's not lost on me it's not a small thing it's something I deliberated on for really you know a couple of days and you know came to my decision and and uh and I think everyone's on board with that. Even you know the guy that's not going to be in there tomorrow. I'm, you know we had this out, and we're all together on it, and and we move forward. I'm just curious that conversation that you had with that said player, right? Did he mm-hmm. try to politic you? Did he go, "Oh, come nope. on"? He nope. said, "I get it." You get it. You He's, know we had this okay. conversation essentially, like I said, ten days ago. We had them all there, and it could have been some or any of them and so i think in a way probably prepared for that conversation um i'm sure there's certainly some disappointment but um we we understand that the mission that we're on and what our goal is of, of being a championship team and and this this will not derail that group or us and we're all in this thing together and, and i think we all understand that and are on that same page Aaron, how do you go about finding that line of being sort of a friend to the players and and being a boss? Um, obviously, you're a young man, much younger than 50. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> so, so well clearly, played. thank you. So clearly, you are at an age, though, where you're still, you know, one of the reasons that you're an effective manager is that you're able to relate to the players. But just how do you go about drawing that line of when it goes from being fun, friendly time to being like, I'm the decision maker? It just does. You just do. And I think it's something that, you know, you learn and happens over time that, and I think most of our guys, most professionals understand that there's difficult decisions that have to be made, you know, throughout the course of the year that you certainly understand that everyone's not going to like and, but sometimes you have to make a tough call. It doesn't make it the right decision all the time, but something that, um, you know, frankly, um, I'm certainly always empathetic when there's a tough decision to be made, um, but I'm also very okay with it. And I think if you treat people consistently and honestly and openly over time, uh, that works itself out as well.